Hello again my friends, this is Boynie's Dog and welcome to the channel where I play and review every game released on the Evercade, old and new. In today's episode we continue our deeper dive of the fourth home computer cart, Delphine Software Collection 1 with the second game, Flashback. Let's get stuck in. The year is 2142, Comrade Hart, agent with the Galaxia Bureau, stumbles upon something he shouldn't and fearing for his life he closes memories and places them into a hollow cube. Shortly after he's caught by a pulse of laser light which knocks him unconscious when he eventually comes to, he has no memory of who he is, where he is or why he is there, all he knows is he has to escape. Flashback is a cinematic sci-fi platform game developed by Delphine Software and released in 1992. And of no, even though this is a home computer collection, it is in fact the Mega Drive version. They say the Amiga version isn't as good, but my only complaint is the title screen and opening theme kicked absolute butt on the Amiga version. Wish there were both versions here. Never mind, I digress. On with the game. Flashback continues in the cinematic tradition of Another World and is another game that influenced the beautiful Full Void years later. And I keep forgetting to mention the rather wonderful Heart of Darkness. Please please, if there is a way, can we have Heart of Darkness? It would be amazing, it really would. I would be fine to have it as a solo game if there's FMV fill up the car as long as it was a special edition. <laughs> Flashback is definitely a step up to another world in a lot of ways. It's much more story focused, not just relying on visuals to tell a story, but actual interactions with a variety of characters. The worlds are much more realised and the characters that dwell within, much like Comrade, have far more animations and actions to their name. After being shot down in a jungle and finding a hollow cube, you follow breadcrumbs of clues to slowly get Comrade's life back. The first area looks lovely and is great to show you how enemies in the world works, as well as give you lots of practice trying out the different actions you can perform. Once you finally leave the jungle by jumping down a seemingly bottomless pit with a handy gravity belt, the game does change it up quite significantly. You land in a city and many inspirations are soon apparent. Blade Runner is an obvious one, a bit more heavily Total Recall if we're being honest. Later still you battle through a killer game show, Death Tower, which puts to mind The Running Man. All awesome sci-fi to take from, so no complaints here. It's in the city that the game slows but opens up, allowing you to take tube trains at will to various parts of the map, gaining a work permit, then taking on missions like delivering items, escorting VIPs and hunting down robots disguised as humans. To get enough money to gain fake papers to enter the previously mentioned Death Tower game, this first prize is a ticket to Earth. And it's through these missions that you get to explore more of the city and realise how great the game is at building a believable world. It feels lived in, helped a lot by the rotoscoped characters that wander the place, with wonderful little touches and animations throughout.
As the game progresses, there's mutants and aliens and all manner of shenanigans, which I don't want to completely give away here, as like the other games I've mentioned, it's not the longest game, but it's definitely the biggest out of full void in another world. Though that is due in part to a lot of back and forthing, especially when doing missions in the city level, which I still very much enjoyed. In the end this is an absolutely fantastic game, it takes a lot from another world and expands upon it. Although because of this it's more gamey if that makes sense. Still alongside another world, on the cart you really can't argue with the awesomeness of it all. This really should be a done deal, and there's still two more games beside to try out. Even without those two titles, I would argue this is a decent purchase. These games are a part of gaming history, especially when it comes to visual storytelling and cinematic leaning titles. It is really making me hungry for Art of Darkness on the Evercade. Wouldn't that be nice? A little bit tasty, no? Anyway, buy this collection. That is all. And if you've made it here to the end of the episode, thanks ever so much for joining me. Leave a thumbs up or comment if you'd like. Either way, I'm just chuffed your poke your head in for a goosey gander. As always, I hope you're having the most awesome of days, my friends. And until next time, be seeing you.